This time I'm going to be taking some Fusion 360 files, exporting them, and cutting them on a laser cutter. Welcome to another episode. In the last episode on this particular project for a customer, I made an injection mold for one of the parts. Since then, I made a second injection mold for the other part, which you'll see later in this video. But the main focus of this video is some of the other pieces that he needed. He had some flat pieces that I thought would be easier to cut out of flat 1 8 inch thick acrylic. So I'm going to show you how I took those fusion files and converted them into a format that I could use on my laser cutter and then cut them on the laser. Let's head to the computer and I'll show you how I did that. These are all of the parts for the product that I'm helping make. These you've seen already. Uh, these are the injection molded parts. And then these parts here are ones that he asked to have injection molded, but I'm going to use a laser cutter with 1 8 inch thick acrylic to make these instead. So let me show you how to take these parts and convert them into something that I can cut on the laser. The first thing is I start with a new design and then I want to drag these components into it and you could say it says please save the design before inserting the components. So I'll go ahead and do that. And now I can do that again. Okay, so that's the first part and I don't know, for some reason I want it to be oriented this way. The other thing is the back side has some lettering on it, so I want to flip it this way so that the lettering will show up and you'll see why that's important in a minute when we export it. Grab the other two parts and I'll move them so that they're near this other part doesn't really matter exactly where they are for this purpose. It'll be important later uh, uh, when I set everything up for laser cutting for production, but I can do that in the 2D drawing program after I export these. Okay, so now I've got the three parts that are required, and the next step is to export this as a 2D file. I'm going to use new drawing from design and then change this to inches since this is what I mostly work in, especially with the laser cutter. And then this is currently showing, it says front, but yep, top is the one that I want. And then the other thing I need to do is change it so that it's full size, which is one to one. Click there and then click OK. There are some elements like the the grid and the label box down here that I don't need. So I'll delete those and then just go ahead and save this. And that name works just fine. At this point, I want to output this in a format that I can read with Inkscape because I'm going to first load the files into Inkscape before loading them into CorelDRAW. CorelDRAW is what I use on the laser cutter to actually drive the laser cutter. I have these choices for outputting it and I have used PDF successfully. This time I'm going to use Output Sheet as DXF. So I'll go ahead and save it here. Once I've done that, I can switch to Inkscape. And then in Inkscape, I can say Import, and then select that file that I just exported. And I want to use Read from File for the dimensions so that it uses the correct dimensions as before. And then you can see it loaded it in, which is perfect. And if we look at the, let me zoom in. What I want to do next is ungroup this. And I've discovered I have to ungroup it twice for this particular one. So now you can see it's uh, separate pieces. If we take a look at this one, I just want to check the, the size. You can see that we have the dimensions here in millimeters. I'm going to change it to inches. That looks like the correct width, about 4.5 inches. Let's go back to Fusion. I'll go to the model, switch to inches. And then I'll go from here to here. Yep, so it's about the same size. 
so that means that imported correctly. The next thing I want to do is change some of the colors. On the laser, I use different colors to refer to different levels of cutting, basically the, amount, the, the power and the speed. I'm going to use red to indicate that I want to cut all the way through. So I'm going to mark everything as red. And I want to make sure that this is, this is being a little bit picky at the moment, but I want to make sure that this is 255 because the laser cutter software is looking for values that are full red. The next thing I want to do is change the piece and the parts in here, the lettering, so that it etches. And for etching, I'm going to use green. So I'll put this, I'll just type it in, 255 for green, and then I'll do zero for red. And so now you can see that this is green. The final thing that's useful to do is to set the stroke width. And I'm going to try setting it to one pixel. Now, if I take a look, it's really not one pixel. So if you want this to work correctly with a laser, what you really want to do is I'll go to inches and then I'll set it to 0 0.001 inches. Now when you do that, it's kind of hard to see in Inkscape. So I actually tend to prefer to keep a large size here so I can see it better. And then when I bring it into CorelDRAW, I select everything and then change it to hairline and that works fine. The final thing I want to do is save this and I discovered that saving it as EPS works pretty well for bringing it into CorelDRAW. Before I do that though, one thing I would mention is that what I would typically do is set the page size to match the size of my laser, which is uh, 16 inches wide by 12 inches tall, and then lay out all the parts on here. I have CorelDRAW running on a really old laptop, so it's much more convenient to do this work on my desktop before I transfer the file to the laptop. I'm not going to do that now because I'm just going to test print a few of these to make sure that it works. So I'll do save as, and then EPS is what I found works best when importing into CorelDRAW, because when I do that, it seems to come in with all of the pieces, you know, all of the curves and the colors and everything else correct and the size correct. If you had text, this actually doesn't have text because uh, these were pulled from 3D rather than actual text. You would want to probably convert text to paths. And if you had any images or filled areas, it would rasterize. I don't have any in here. I'm just to have lines that are either cut or etched. So I'll go ahead and save that. And now we can head to my workshop, load the file into CorelDRAW on my laptop, and then cut them on my VersaLaser cutter. I have the uh, 1 8 inch acrylic that I will put in the laser cutter. And then the first thing that I need to do is I need to focus it. And I've already focused it, but uh, these buttons here... ...allow me to uh, select the height until it's just right. Then once I've focused it, then I can go ahead and uh, start the job. And uh, you can see that there's uh, a bright uh, place where it's burning the, t the, uh, the top of the paper. Sometimes it's a little bit uh, more flame. And uh, in those cases, it's usually because it's hitting some of the leftover resin from when I was cutting plywood that is on the, uh, the honeycomb. Now I don't get the, uh, the burning like this when I uh, don't have the paper on it, but uh, the paper protects the uh, surface of the acrylic. Uh, without this, uh, I'll get uh, smoke marks because the acrylic itself also does smoke. So it's now uh, finished and I can pull this out. And uh, these parts, they're held on uh, on the back by some segments that were not quite cut all the way through, but were mostly cut through. And the reason I, ha I leave the, um, 
the cardboard on here, as I mentioned, is to protect the acrylic. So when I del with, when this gets delivered, it will. Uh, they can just peel it off, and they'll have a perfectly clean acrylic surface. This is the new mold that, that I made, and <laughs> didn't fill up all the way. So. I'm adjusting the, the pressure again, adjusting it up, and uh, this one is a little bit tricky to get out of the mold, so I have to pry it out. Uh, what that means is that I'm going to need to redo this mold half with uh, some ejector pins. But this will work fine for getting some samples to the customer so that he can Check to see if there are any other changes he needs to make before I send him the mold. Okay, so that time it filled the mold all the way. And uh, again, it's a little tricky to pry it out. But as long as I'm a little bit careful, it's not bad. And this is the type of thing that is not unusual to see in a manual mold where you have to actually pluck it out. But there you go. So I'll just make uh, a few more. He needs a total of, uh, I'm sending him three samples. So there are two per sample. So he needs a total of six of these. Okay, this one stuck together a little bit more. And then, as I say, I just pry it off. Pry it off like that. I'm doing a little bit from each side. And then I can just come back and now it pops out. I sent three sets of parts, both injection molded and laser cut acrylic to the customer for approval. And from the photos you see here, uh, first photo is the assembly that I did, and then the second and third photo are after he received the files and put on some foam. You can see how it's been used to hold a cell phone or tablet, etc. He's very happy with the parts. I still have issues getting the second part out of the second mold, as you saw, so I'm going to, in the next episode, and probably last episode, add ejector pins to the second mold to make it a lot easier to get out the parts. Then I'm going to produce a batch of parts and send them off to the customer. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you next time.